Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 147. I am your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is the lovely and wonderful Jason. Uh, we didn't get to talk about it, but I knew Ewan was going to ask about milk, but I've got milk on me, always, so. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I'm ready. My, uh, forget the intro. My milk dilemma <laughs> is that I, I use a lot of milk, but I use it for, like, lattes and cereals and drinking. Sure. And so my dilemma is, do I get the gallon of whole milk or do I get half gallon of whole and a half gallon of chocolate milk? And I know that doesn't work because it's not enough whole but then a gallon and then a half gallon is too much. And it you get both. It's the, you get both. It's the number one. I, but I can't. I want to pour it down the sink. So it's the number one reason I don't get chocolate milk is like, I, I can't get the right amount. Babs Give me juice. like three quarters. Where's the if show? Like, hey, get me off. Right. Yeah. We're good? Okay. It, imagine this, though. What if they sold three quarter gallons? Ooh, that would be perfect for it me. It would be. But like, bro, just just you got to adapt and survive. So. You're right. I should try it differently. I'm going to try. I'm going to do better, Jason. I will, do I, better. I will do better. I'll do better. I'll do better. I'll do better, Jason. And Ian Gibson's here. <laughs> Hi, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. I've never heard that whole song before. <laughs> <laughs> it had some interesting moments. I didn't know there was a whole song. That's awesome. <laughs> will, it's I need there. to know. I Genuinely... I don't know what your your chocolate milk. Opinion. Oh, you're lactose intolerant, aren't you? You little <laughs> shit. No, I, I'm you not. I don't. Weakling. I don't like lactose, and I won't stand for it. Lactose intolerant, <laughs> everybody. No, I I love chocolate milk. I usually do the. I had a bunch of the glass bottles, but it's the like glass bottle one. Uh, I can't Yoo-hoo? remember the name of the farm. No, 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 no. It's like oh, a okay. local glass okay. bottle. They're like in the special fridge section. <laughs> Excuse me, are you trying to be fancy about chocolate milk <laughs> on a stream that we have Jason on? How fucking dare you insult <laughs> yeah, the king yeah, of chocolate yeah. milk like yeah, that? Yeah, I don't know. I man. love to fucking dare I put you. mocha in my coffee every day. Jesus chocolate milk? Christ. Milk related question. You guys do you guys know about zippies? <laughs> <laughs> is that I've heard, so I've heard of them, but so okay this is related if you take a milk container like a plastic milk container you know the kind that has like sometimes it has like that waxy interior on it or something just like a normal plastic jug that has milk in it you you drink it you drink all the milk whatever and you have an empty one of those if you take it outside and you hang it like five six feet off the ground or higher and you light it on fire which takes a little bit but it will catch on fire the plastic will melt and as the plastic drips it's on fire and it makes this incredible noise where it just goes whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Whoa. Aren't, you, aren't, you, aren't, you, aren't you glad you asked me on the show will aren't you really yeah, glad I'm very, very I, okay happy here. look there's I no you making fun of me. Or regret here <laughs> but every time every time my family remembers that and we have one of those jugs we all go outside and we hang it up and we set it on fire and we go that's and we watch it for five minutes and listen to it and it's the coolest fucking thing it's amazing it's great um wow wow <clears throat> i was gonna say i do like chocolate milk a lot but i have another dairy product that i love even more that is currently in my fridge which is Don't hood eggnog it. uh <laughs> eggnog is very good eggnog is very good I, why is it hood why is it hood yeah. i'm afraid to ask but why is it called hood you eggnog? leave it on the hood and let it saturate what do you mean you it's the name it. of the the company the brand is hood never had hood milk it's just, yeah but when 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 brands put hood in front of something 50 no. percent of the time it's racist so no. what do you mean craft mac and cheese um uh, oh what do you want God. from me why can't i say the name of the brand it's the only good eggnog i'm not gonna just say eggnog oh that's fair what oh, actually you could wait Nothing. I, wait, 2024 is one of the show. They actually have official announced when Arcane's coming out. It's kind of cool. Uh, November. Oh, the next season? Yeah, it's 2024, November. The show's good. The show's it's good. good. I didn't watch it. Which I don't good. play uh, Hearthstone. You can watch the show. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not the same thing. It's not mutual exclusive, Will. Come on now. Yeah, show's good. Show's good. It's just because I don't watch Invincible doesn't mean I have to be a superhero. I mean, I'm not trying to fucking go out in a cape and tights and shit. <laughs> Those correlations. Well, you <laughs> had me. So... Your argument was solid, and then you came up with an yeah, example I mean, that on. did like, not support you. It's the same you. thing, right? Like, 
God, this episode, this episode is like is like an Indian restaurant where every dish Uh-oh. so far has been way too spicy. <laughs> I don't know where that was. Just go. spicing it out all over the place. That could have gone racist. Sassy yeah, I could have gone. I could have gone I anywhere. I could have been. I could. I could have been involved on a clip it's there. Like, I would not have been excited milk. about it. Chocolate milk. We're getting spicy. Zippies. We're getting spicy. Oh man. Well, what's your reaction? Uh oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, thinking of spicy. Speaking of spicy, uh, we've got spicy content coming up soon. Extra Life 2023. Yeah, that's right. We're both doing Extra Life. You guys doing Extra Life? You got your that's right day planned out. We do not. Yeah, so. we're close. We're close. So we are going to be doing it uh, starting Saturday, November 18th at noon Eastern time. Um, we're going to be going for 24 hours. Uh, we're going to have some great stuff planned. We're going to be doing it at my place again. So we're going to have all four of us plus two special guests this year. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Secret guest, a guest secret or no. Um, actually, I think they, I, you could probably guess. You could probably guess. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I don't, I prefer to leave it a secret. It's kind of fun. I mean, we can tell them. Oh, okay. Never you've, mind. you already well, you you already booked your flight, so so Jason's going to be on our stream this year. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. How did one you of know? Them, oh, one of them rhymes with Obama. I'm going to yeah. Disney World and on the 17th though. So, gotcha. Oh, wait, are you really? Yeah, of course. It's my daily <laughs> oh, Disney daily Disney uh, visit in November um, with my family. <laughs> Well, see, the thing was, we decided to finally get back at Zach at Save Data for never setting dates properly. And so no. we, lock, we locked in our Extra Life date and we locked in Jason coming down and joining us <laughs> because we knew Zach was going to pick the same fucking weekend at some point and screw him out of a guest. So, yeah, yeah. but they have but like 15 the same weekend. Save Data members. <laughs> so they're covered. They'll fill somebody. Somebody will fill my spot. So, uh, like get, Carl, Carl Randomly yeah. will pop in. They'll, they'll get the lawyer wear, or the doctor. Wear, or the, wear, yeah, one of those guys. The, the doctor voice actor. One, the, the troll man. The, the bird the woman. Man. The guy who knows <laughs> the about <bird>. music. <laughs> Are these real nicknames for save data people? Yeah, Because I, I don't know. No, the bird woman. That was, that was a reference to All the Sunny. The bird woman. <laughs> get one of the other ones to help us. The troll man. The bird woman. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's going to be a great time. We wanted to get that out there. We're going to be uh, doing a lot of press for it next week. Probably a trailer or two talking about the unlocks, talking about the, the schedule. Junkets. <laughs> Hitting all the junkets. Bro, I've it's got gonna beef be with you guys about the show, though. We, Because you already set your schedule. We asked you to do that Pokemon no. tournament that week. I was like, I was going to be super excited, but you already were booked up. We couldn't find a time. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah because... Yeah, because Will was working out. We're we're still trying to do some cross site stuff, so it should be should be fun. Well, the no, problem man. with the I think the Pokemon thing was that we would need like audio and video, and we don't. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty yeah. complicated. Yeah, yeah. honestly, so probably anything... would be better. You did the draft thing pre off stream or like a video. It would be a video separate mm-hmm. from the actual tournament because yeah, that's the complication. Yeah. I think. But that honestly, that's. That sounds like you're falling into the same mistake we make every extra life, which is we plan these elaborate segments and then we realize, oh, we don't really have time to prep or do that properly because we're too busy doing everything else that needs to happen with extra life. Um, and we, we, we make that mistake pr- pretty much every year with at least a couple segments where we're like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this crazy. We're going to do a gingerbread competition because Will's in one gingerbread competition before. And then it's just like, this is too complicated. Where do we put the camera? This is, uh, you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always, it's always a blast. Uh, so yeah, look, looking forward to that. Um, yeah, Extra Life 2024. What, what, well, let me ask you this. What's your guys, what are you looking forward to the most in your Extra Life? What event that you know that you guys are doing? Like, we'll start with Ian. Like, what, what, what is your favorite one you're, you're ready to, to look forward to or something like that? So for me, what I did last year um, was I, I got up and I did like the 4 to 8 a.m. segment. So basically, I went to bed a little early. Not as early as I would like last year, but I got a couple hours to sleep in. And then I got up early. Everybody else who was awake went to bed and I just had that four to eight a.m. And it was like this weird, cozy ASMR stream. And and we were on the giant bomb website. So there were a couple people there with me, but it was literally just like, hey, guys, good morning. 
It's 4.30. We're going to play some weird games and drink coffee. And it was just like a real fucking chill. And so I don't even know what I'm going to play during that segment yet, but it's just like that nice, like two thirds of the way through. Let's have a little chill moment and head into the second day. That's 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 the feeling I'm looking you forward look, to. You look forward to being alone in the morning is what you're telling me. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's I'll, I'll fully admit to that. That's my that's recharge fair. time in a way. I can recharge on stream, but not with people in the room. That's fair. Well, Jesus. what's what's your what are you looking forward to the most? Will. Your own uh, wait, alone wait, time. Wait, 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 Will. Actually, I don't know what you're talking about, Sibylla. Oh, no. I can see the stream. Can you see the stream, Will? Yeah. Sorry, uh, Sibylla posted a message that says, "I can't see the stream right now." It might <laughs> have something okay. to do with what I did. I might have hacked it. Oh, yeah, Jason tends to hack Twitch every so often. Okay, um, gotcha. I think we're good, though. I think we can keep going. Sorry for the, the tech delay. Uh, the thing I'm looking forward to most, uh, other than Ian's sweet lips, uh, is um, doing the Will's weird games, because I like showing off bad shit, um, and, uh, and just being uh, able to do bits, in-person bits. It's fun doing in person riffin. Yeah. Yeah. Gryffindor. Riffindor. Lots of lots of lots of in person time with the Subpixel boys this week. Next weekend. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a nightmare. I got an email from my flight. It said, Hey, would you like to pay four hundred dollars to get extra leg room? And I said, No. I would four hundred dollars for extra leg room? That's what they're charging nowadays. Something Jesus. like that. It's a nightmare. I actually gotta figure out baggage. Uh, so I can, I gotta figure out what exactly I'm bringing. Anyway, that's stuff are you bringing? Jeez. Uh, okay. I have, I actually Ship have like a down. a big tote like, full of stuff that I like my, organized. I'm bringing my edibles and anything else that can get me banned. So, the, hell yeah. yeah, that's smart. That's really smart. <laughs> that's smart. That's I want the air, I want I want the the United States flight services to really hone down and lock me in. So that's my <laughs> oh, goal. Oh, sorry guys, I can't make it. I couldn't get on the flight. Oh no, uh, I got to go fire oh, emblem all weekend. Sorry. Oh no. <laughs> uh, nightmare. Uh, I was gonna talk about this quick, but I'll talk about it very quick. I've been watching uh. Star Trek: Next Generation, fantastic television series. Mm -hmm. I'm on season four. And I had, uh, I've owned these great uh, uh, blueprints of the original Star Trek ship uh, for the 1960s. Oh. They're like huge fold-out blueprints that they sold and all this stuff. So I went on the old eBay and I said, I wonder if they ever made these for the Star Trek Next Generation ship. And they did. And they're beautiful. And I love them. Oh, wow. And they come in this big box. And you open the box, and there's all the blueprints, and they have like literally every deck. Uh, are they are they both called the Enterprise? Yes, they are both called the Enterprise. Are they supposed to be the same ship? They're the no no it's they're the same ship in the sense of you name a ship the same thing, but they're not supposed they're, they're not different designs of the same ship. They're not it's not oh. the ship of Theseus. Are Aren't the they built a new Enterprise at some point. Picard but, they and... called it, but, but they called it the Enterprise, though? The USS Enterprise? Yeah, could they not get more confusing with that? I mean, I get yeah, what they're trying to do here. That's not, how, that's not how militaries do it. Like, they have, like, yeah. a class of ship that's the same, but the ship names if, are actually If different. I If I have a battleship, I'm not going to name every battleship the Arizona, but there's, okay? Like, like there's that's still, not... Aren't there still ships named the... There's still ships named the same thing. Yeah, but uh, usually very far apart. Like there's the Enterprise yeah. from the 1700s and the Enterprise from the 50s. But that's the know? Enterprise from 2200 and the Enterprise from 2400. Like oh, they're 200 years apart. Yeah. Okay, I that I didn't know. I'll allow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll allow it. Yeah, that makes sense apart. now. Uh, anyways, I'm very excited Real about quick. these. I'll allow it. Oh, okay. Uh, they also had an advertisement in there for the VHS Star Trek game. Uh, which is a, one of those games that you like play the VHS and you have to like stop oh, during it. I've seen people play. Oh it before. man, it's very oh, good. Um, That's like I, I used to play. Blue's Clues, like, and I had to stop the video. 
to make sure I found where the clue was. <laughs> he was getting too Mr. Pe out. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Pepper was like, over there. And I'm like, oh, what? There's Sorry. a clue? I thought he was talking about the other reason most people wore out VHS oh, no, tapes no, in the no. 80s I wore and out. 90s. Look, look, I'm not going to get explicit that? on the stream. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. He's got them big ears. <laughs> I just remember the slot hurt my penis. All, all I'm going to say is I do have both two VCRs and the technology to capture from a VCR. So. So we're watching porn, everybody. Uh, <laughs> do you think they sell porn on Shop Goodwill like yes. old porn? They sell porn everywhere, man. You can buy porn on a vending machine, I'm assuming. Come on now. God, I just like I've, the idea of like, I want to get like, like 50 pound lot of 80s porn tapes. <laughs> do you, I, this is a, I, we have so much to talk about today, but I would rather talk about this. <laughs> Good segue. I was going to say lower quality porn videos <laughs> have like that nostalgia factor to them. <laughs> yes. But it has to be, it has to be like authentic, bad low res. <laughs> yeah. It can't be, it can't be just bad compression low res. You're like, was this recorded in a college dorm in like 2010? No, it was a 720p. It was like a mini DV camcorder. Um, I don't, I don't know if you, if you've seen this, but um, <laughs> the hot thing now is to take those AI upscale algorithms and run porn through it. So you take one of those and you upscale it to 4K. Oh my god! Yes. I want to see upscale uh, porn. The thing is, I, I've seen clips of it, and it actually doesn't look that bad upscaling. Like, it's it's not like it's adding artifacts or anything. It's just really smooth, but like high res, and you're like, how the fuck do they take 480p and get it to 4K and it looks this okay? It's crazy. Oh. Porn, like porn has always been at the cutting edge of technology, like the whole internet blowing up because of porn sites and things like, you know, it's crazy out there. Ugh, it's a jungle. Out crazy there. out there. Um, sorry, I just had to get that off off my chest uh, and talk about it. Uh, folks, let's move it <coughs> into the game section. That was a bit of the chit chat section, as we like to call it. Uh, moving ahead here. I'm going to talk about the games I've been playing real quick. Uh, RoboCop Rogue City is the new RoboCop video game. I can't remember if it was here or at work that I had said um, that I thought this game was a retelling of RoboCop, but I'm pretty sure it just takes place after RoboCop, which is I, mean, I, I, I know the cooler. first movie pretty inside out, so I could tell you if it yeah. does or not. I mean, no, do, you it, verse, do, you, do you verse the uh, Red Foreman gang or no? No. Listen here, Jason. It is one of my favorite uh, movies of all time, and I watched hey, it literally I again you, today. I don't know what you do. Um, no, no, you're fine. I, it was because the when I had played the demo of the game, they had like brought you back to the the chair in the police station, and it like seemed yeah. like it was that beginning sequence, but they were retelling it. But now they've been talking about like the gang that was there before that you you kill he kills in the movie, and like who's taking over and filling the gap. So. Oh, that's a good follow on is like, yeah, yeah, sure. You got rid of them. And now there's a power vacuum and you still got to deal with people. So it like it, after like the initial opening, it just is like, hey, you're in the police station and then you help out with some side quests. Then you go out to old Detroit and you like literally patrol the streets. Uh, you can hand out tickets. Uh, you can wow. uh, do all sorts of stuff. There's like some connective tissue on like one big case you're following, but there's several other like mini cases in there. So you, um, you're like solving those cases. You're going into buildings, doing stuff. I'm playing on the Xbox Series X. It looks okay. Um, it it has a lot of artifacting or not artifacting, but just like glitching, visual glitching, popping. Like, it just looks like the Xbox is not powerful. It's not optimized well to run, so it's just, like, not having a fun uh -huh. time displaying. But other than that, uh, it is a great homage to the movies. It is pretty good writing. I found a couple of radio stations that were, like, one was an ad for sleeping pills for kids, and the other was, an, was like, uh, Mr. 
childhood uh, television star Mr. Pinky died today. He was brutally murdered in a homicide in a Chicago brothel. <laughs> and it's just like all this stuff. Uh, so it's fun. You're also, it's an RPG too. So you're like upgrading your different systems. You uh, have your gun that you're just walking around blowing people apart. Uh, they introduced suicide bombers in the last mission I played uh, and a couple Jesus. other things. So very fun game. I highly recommend it. I would not pay the full $60 for it. I would pick it up for like 40 or less uh, in a bit. Rogue City? Rogue City. It's very Rogue fun. City. If you like Robocop, I would get it now. You paid 60 Two. for it? You paid 60 Uh, I pay nothing, but I expensed an amount of money for piracy piracy is illegal and also i believe it's 50 bucks on steam so it's oh, interesting it? if it was more on on console it was on, cool, I bought it on console so it does look kind of cool nice it's thanks for sharing cool. sorry i was drinking i thought maybe someone was still talking uh and then the other game i was playing this week don't shake your head at me <laughs> like i'm an idiot uh <laughs> The other game I've played this week, I started playing Ocarina of Time again. I'm pretty sure I beat it earlier this year, or it might have been la late last year. Hey, um, what, but what a pickup right there. I love Ocarina of Time, and now I'm going through it without using a guide, because I want to know if I'm good enough to do a randomizer. So uh, You could I'm probably just... beat Zach. Let him know. Challenge him right now. Well, I, 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 I haven't, I'm not ready for a randomizer. I'm playing Doesn't through it matter. now. To see if I can do a randomizer. Um, but this will challenge Zach on the 13th of December. Let it be known. Is that gonna dominate. He, is he doing something on the 13th of December? Yeah, he he's, he's got playing a dentist Zelda now. Yeah. Oh. I just picked the day. Hope it works. Um. So, anyways, I'm gonna I'm playing through that. It's actually genuinely funny. Like the stuff I forget. And then I, like, actually read what characters are saying, and you're like, oh, like, you f realize how how you're s originally supposed to get to the next thing, and you're just like, oh, okay. there's actually There's actually a lot of, I don't want to say hidden, but there's a lot of, like, world building in that game. I mean, that's why it's still the GOAT, in my opinion, but there's actually a lot of world building in that game. There's a actually a dying soldier you can find that, like, they like they edited it in right before like Ganondorf takes over. You can find that guy. It's like a it's not an Easter egg, but you can find him before he heals over and dies actually in the game. And they didn't need to put that in there, but they throw it in there. So there's a bunch of stuff like that. I just hate the terrifying screaming uh, re dead. The re dead. Yeah. Oh, the worst. Um, but it's fun. Uh, it plays good on the Switch. I did download like a degenerate. The um, the ship of. I don't know why it's called Theseus ship. No, it's the ship of Harkin or something like that is the PC emulator Harkonnen. version of it. Uh, and That's I don't weird. know that. I don't know that reference if it is a reference to something, but that version I, I booted up on PC and it's just like 60 frames per second, like super fast response time. Uh, and I was like, what if I just played it on PC now? Um, yeah, that's my, uh, that is my video games this week. Ian, uh, you have been playing uh, more of a game you swore off. Uh, you said you would <laughs> never not... play it again and that you hated it. I don't think I went that far. I did say I don't, I don't think it's that good and it has problems. But that being said, the thing about City Skylines 2 is that it's just enough of the right type of game that I will play it while listening to a podcast. And the other thing is... Like I said, doing a lot of prep for extra life, busy, hopping around, you know, oh, I got to clean this. I got to test this. I got to get this in the, out of the way, etc. And it's nice to be able to sit down for an hour and just like completely relax to a game. And it's like, I don't have to worry about story. I'm not even worrying about challenge. I'm just playing it on sandbox mode. I'm just going to draw some fucking highway overpasses, you know, and it's it's like the perfect game for this moment. I just wish the game itself was perfect because again it's pretty flawed um thank god it's on game pass do not spend any fucking money on this game because it's in a bad state right now but it's more of city skylines so if you like the first one sure go ahead play this one too just don't <laughs> expect it to be it's not even uh, honestly in this current state it's not as good as the first one so just be aware 
That's, that's wild. Would you recommend the first one then? Just buying that? Um, actually, yeah. If you want to try out a City Skylines, is the first one on Game well, Pass? No, I don't. I don't think it is. I'm going to go with the assumption that it's not. I would not pay money for either game, honestly. Um, yeah, it's tough. It's tough for me to say these games have have big flaws in them. So it it balances out to probably like a six out of ten. So it's like That's... some of it scratches the itch and some of it it's for two in the for face. the Skylines two. This is the game you sh- you say we don't recommend, but it's still a six out of ten. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would say. I I, I got no, You got to put it lower the, then, man. I would I would say. I think the first one's probably a six out of ten, okay, or a seven out of ten. That's fine. I think I think the second one's probably a four out of ten or a five out of ten right now. Because six out of ten is still better than average. So, yeah, and I think that's fair. Skylines too. Down in Cincinnati, we have a restaurant called Skyline. So. <laughs> We don't have a game. We have a restaurant. Well, since he, since, since I had it. I'll go with five out of ten. Five out of ten. It's five an average game. I, I wasn't expecting to review it today, but, but you know, that's a good point. I just, hey, I'm just pointing out. I, hey, that's all I'm it's saying. It's fair. Your Challenge Honor, Your Honor, fair. I can't be held against this sort of reviewing <laughs> I've been doing. I'll say a pheasant five Anyways, out of ten. Speaking of games, Jason, what have you been playing? Uh, yeah, I didn't mark it down because I just wanted to make sure. Besides, we do a bunch of first looks at Save the Way. I was on a bunch, like a couple of them myself between now and then. One was the new, new game. It was like Song of, I don't fucking remember. It was Song of something. It was a new, new league tie in game, but they took the property and made it like a platformer with new, new. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who what, is new, what new? What the fuck are you saying? It's a Yeti. <laughs> Yeti. New, new's a Yeti. A boy who rides a Yeti named Willump. You mean Avatar? What are you- what are you? Are you speaking of he's, riddles? He's a league character, guys. Come on, get with the times. Oh, okay, okay. I understand. Can we move on now and not talk about that? Yeah, anymore? it's a platformer. <laughs> it's 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 just a kid. It's like it, it's a kitty game. So you just do like platformers. Like, and stuff. Cat, I'm of, fine with kitty games. It I takes just don't like want it reminds me of it takes two. It, it, it's like it, it takes two. It's like platforming like that. Oh, I love it takes two. Uh, so there's that. We played Paranormal Sight, which was. I don't know if you guys have played 999, but it gives me that kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah it's a new 999 is good. Yeah, uh, but it, 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 it branches off and has different stories, but you're doing some like investigation kind of stuff. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, that looks you, good. Yeah, it's got a good artwork and kind of like, again, the, the stories we only played about two and a half hours, but it's kind of drawing you in a little bit. We did like the prologue part of it. Um, um, real quick, what's the so 999 is you have the story element, but then you basically have like the kind of like point and click escape room type yeah, like there's the point and click stuff yeah so that's so it's similar gameplay well the here. gameplay for this is yeah since i don't want to spoil it too much but you have like a you have a, a way to like siphon people's soul we'll say it like that and each character it's that like we've come off. across has like a like a kind of like a i don't say persona but a thing that like can like help you capture somebody else's soul and just trying to find out like oh, okay other people's gimmicks of like are, are they going to beat you or are you going to beat them uh uh-huh. one of the ones one of the gimmicks just kind of like early on was a guy if as soon as you hear the the voice of it it captures you and kills you so you had to when you talk to him you had to turn down the, the in-game audio to beat him oh that's and wild like, yeah that's so, pretty cool so stuff like that you could and you make him turn you're like yours you need to make people turn around and walk away so sometimes you would like insult somebody and they're like oh fuck you then and then walk away and then you'd kill them like and then siphon out their soul fuck me so fuck you, had to, you. you had to find like the trick to like beat them essentially for that character we were playing at that moment. I mean, it might change because again, we're we're playing a different character for outside the prologue. prologue so, oh, fuck, this came out this year. Yeah, pretty good. I'm looking forward to playing it. It's just finding times for it is really nice. You reminded yeah. me, I need to go back to Danganronpa. Dang, I like Danganronpa. The only problem <sighs> with Danganronpa and why we don't play it on stream is a, all of us have played it. B, it it would take like forty hours, forty five hours. It, it, I'm and it's already vo- it's already voice it's al- it's already voice acted is another big thing for us. So because uh, apparently Paranormal Sight is ten to twelve hours to see every ending. Yep, it's quick. That's fantastic. That's great. It's a nice little bite sized game, is what I've heard. We could do it in three or four streams, is what I've heard. So nice, which I was really happy with. Uh, Considering most of our other streams, we're we're doing rain code, and rain code takes 
Jesus, Rain Code were probably like, I don't know how many streams were into it, but it's a 40 hour, 45 hour game. I like them, but why, um, it, why do you do this to yourselves? I don't know, because we only our scheduling is just really complicated since we only do it every other week. I realized um, I could steal a bunch of save data fans if I played through Danganronpa on stream. You probably could. Uh, I, we get a message Rampa. probably we, we get a message Dang probably Rampa. almost every week about Danganronpa. Like, why don't you play this game? Why don't you play this Dang game? Dang Grandpa! I'm we like need Grandpa uh, cosplay. I'm like six hours, seven hours into it, I think. And that's the first one. Yeah, it's the well, one. We can talk about the first one off habit. stream sometime because I want to see your thoughts on it. It's it's pretty fun. Have you? Did you finish the first case? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was okay. my, I, and I, I think my thoughts at the time, and I don't know if the changes. I thought it was too easy. Oh, that one. That, I, that first I case. I think the is first too case easy. is just okay. It's the first. Knowing that from you case. makes me feel better. Yeah, that first the, case, all... I figured out. No, it's a the joke. moment it happened. It's actually like it, it's a meme in the community. Actually, oh, like okay. the first case. Like people still reference enough. one one three uh, zero three two or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah one, yeah one three zero seven. Yes, <laughs> it's one one zero three seven. Yeah, that's yeah. There's clearly a line between the two yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's a what meme. The fuck? Yeah, don't don't worry about that. The, the, the other cases get a little bit trickier. Uh, some are dumb, but uh, they get a lot harder. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll uh, and maybe I'll play it some more. I will say the second game and V three are. Arguably much better too. The first one's trying to get you into the the, the world building and stuff. So, um, those poor people. Uh, and lastly, since we talked about Paranormal Site, the new new game that you guys brushed me off, it wasn't that good anyway. But uh, the third game I, I can talk about, what I finished is Lamplighters League. We did a oh. first look at that. It's a uh, it's on game. It, hopefully, I don't know if it's on Game Pass. You can check it out uh because it's buggy i don't know if i'd recommend it 100 percent buying it because it's expensive it might not be on game pass anymore it was i think it, it still out. is i played it um, on game pass and i got hard locked in yep. the in the tutorial it's, it, and it's I buggy yeah i played <laughs> i played it on steam and i didn't have any problems but i heard everywhere else you can get it's a little buggy but it's basically like an XCOM, but like a 1920s 1930s kind of like uh indiana jones kind of theme to it where your adventurers trying to you know get the mcguffin before the, the the bad guys all get it different kind of bad guys like one's a one guy's like a you know billionaire guy one's a the like a sea person like a world of the world person and then the other one's like a orson Welles. army dude yeah uh but yeah i like it because like i said out of XCOM likes though the best XCOM light will still always be Trouble uh, Shooter. Uh, it's it's probably the most underrated waters. game of all time. No, not that. That is a great song, though. They hated each other. Did you know that? Uh, those two? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They had a 95% and they just couldn't hit. Yeah, they couldn't hit. Um, What is it? Trouble? It's Trouble Shooter. Oh, Jesus Christ. New New. <laughs> no, not New New. Not New New. Trouble. Uh, oh, sorry. I remembered that. Oh God, this is abandoned the worst children. Time. Troubleshooter, a, a troubleshooter, abandoned children. Still the best non XCOM XCOM game. It's I, if anybody, I will always promote that. this fucking game. Always, if you Shooting. like XCOM, play this fucking game. Sorry, it's, troubleshooter. It's, it's trouble. what? Troubleshooter, trouble abandoned children. children. Yeah, it is. It is. It, it is the best XCOM game that isn't XCOM. It might even be better oh, in its own you, ways. You told me about this. Before. I tell people every time that this game should be played by like literally fucking everybody. Everybody should play this fucking game. Fucking everybody? That's everybody. It's so good because it's like RPG elements. When you when you build out your character, if you fill out like when you're putting like I want this ability, this ability. If you if you put all three on, you'll get this like bonus. So this like the shock damage or something like that does this specific thing. But you get you basically get like superheroes kind of that do their own thing the main character has a sword but it's like you can do like a wind like a wind build or like an actual just like melee sword build or something like that it's so good it is unbelievably good but i like i said i'll, I'll promote that one all the time i could i could talk about that for like years i have how many hours in it? 120 hours so it's so fucking good uh but yeah lamplighter league if you can get past the bugs the stealth mechanics kind of work for it but not really because, like, you can't take down... You'll start getting flooded with, like, actual boss enemies, and you can't kill them in real time. Or you have to kill them in the actual XCOM-like instead of the 
stealth and sneaking around and knocking them out because mm-hmm. they're immune to those. So what ends up happening is once you get further in the game, you're just taking like so fucking long doing the XCOM like instead of the actual stuff that I think they wanted you to do more, which is like knocking people out, kind of like separating enemies, using the terrain to like light fires and stuff. And there's no punishment really for using the same characters over and over again. So you should just max them out and then face roll people instead of actually diversifying your team, mm. which I don't really like too, too much. Um, and there's clearly better people on the teams. Like you, once you find the winning team, you're like, I would never use anybody else. that's not these guys. Cause it's makes the game so much easier. So anyways, those are my three recommendations plus abandoned children, which I like. And then also play finish rating Don will and oh, finish well. Danganronpa and Ian live your best life drink more milk those are my that's what i would say about i think game, um so. i'll do better I'll i think better. radiant i think radiant dawn is going to be my flight uh extra life Let, let's game. talk let's talk dr slash radiant dawn sometime so i want to hear your thoughts dominican republic no not that one we're wrong we're wrong dr Re- Dang- oh, Dang- I was sorry, sorry. No, D- Dang- I realized Rampa's that. DR, no. yeah. I, I was thinking, I was trying to think of a Fire Emblem game that was DR. Also, Jason, did you see that stupid uh, Dark uh, Dark Descent? Darkest Descent? Descent? Darker. For Which one is that? I've, I've heard of the name. What is that? What's the roguelike game where you're the four characters who go crazy all the time? Oh, uh, fuck. What is that game? Darkest Dungeon? Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, I beat that. Darkest or, Dungeon I beat... 2, I think their DLC is The Binding Blade. They're coming uh, out with new... Yeah, they're, they're And coming I was out like, what the game. fuck? You can't just use that name. Hilarious that they're saying that, but that's a character that everybody wanted from the first game back in the second one. So uh, it's Crusaders coming back. <clears throat> I don't care. But Darkest they Dungeon. can't take... Darkest Fire Dungeon 1, I beat on Stygian. That means I'm good, right? No, it doesn't. Yeah. It means... Come on, man. I beat it on Blood Moon. <laughs> Come on. That's Not many people can do that. It's like a... Two percent achievement on. I'm pretty Steam. sure everyone gets a blood moon. Fuck off, Will. I'm never appearing on this show ever again. No one does. I look up the achievement right now. I'm pretty sure. How dare you do this to at me? At least fifty percent of the population. I despise you and everything you stand for. I don't stand. I'm clearly sitting. You're riding on your Enterprise. Which one? I don't fucking know. They're named the same goddamn thing. So. <laughs> Actually, there, there. It's once the seventeen oh one C and once the seventeen oh one D. So uh, how, how was I? How was I supposed to know? That was my let's bad. Let's not. Uh, let's not make ourselves look foolish. Uh, <laughs> speaking of looking foolish, time for the news. I think. Yeah, let's hit it. Take your time. It's time. Folks, uh, we're here to talk about the news and all things newsy. So first up, to the Middle East we go. No. Um, tell me the <laughs> No. And we sail right on over the Middle East to Japan because they have announced the development of a live-action Legend of Zelda film. Folks. Ah, uh, guys, I'm, a, I'm nervous. I don't, this, I don't, this should not be live-action. Right, it shouldn't. it shouldn't be live action. No, your protagonist is famous for not being able to speak coherent sentences. I don't think that's going to work out. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty. Also, good. also, I don't know if they would follow a particular story, or they would just make up one for the movie or show or whatever they would do live action. I, so I was thinking about that. I, I, I think it would be smart, and it's a pretty good story to do. Breath of the Wild and or Tears of the Kingdom story, just do it around there. That's where the games are right now. It's a nice, coherent story. I, I will know? say it worked for Mario, though. I actually enjoyed that movie, and that guy doesn't speak much either. But I feel like he can get more cartoony and get away with it. So <laughs> Not getting into it. Yeah. I like that movie. Um, you guys, know, it's fun. Uh, not getting into it. Okay, fine. It's fine. Bad movie. Um, I will say, um, uh, I mean, to, to turn this a little bit, I don't want to talk about actors, because that's what everybody's talking about. I want to talk about if you had to make a Zelda movie or what what do you want the Zelda movie to be? And it doesn't have to be live action. And for me, I think it's do I, I want it to be Princess Mononoke, but Zelda. 
right? Like that fucking art style, that type of storytelling, that type of like, there's fucking danger in the woods and weird fucking creatures happening. Like that's, that's what it should be to me. I think if I have a Zelda movie, and I, they're never going to do this, but yeah, I'm kind of more towards with Ian that they should make it horror adjacent. Like think of like the prep, the premises yeah. of Zelda's where like a lot of the times it's like a, of the, like a world that's, I know you roll train over it, but a lot of it's like the world's getting fucked up in some way and you're yeah. like the only saving grain. And that's why your courage in, in general, you're going against this grain of like yeah. evil that's... and craziness. Yeah. Especially Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, it is pockets of light where people live surrounded by darkness. You know, they're constantly talking about like, oh, people haven't come that way for a long time or, oh, it's dangerous to go to the next stable over. And it's like, yeah, like it's it's a it's a children's game. They don't go super dark with it, but that world is dangerous and scary. So, yeah, I agree. Leaning leaning into that would be good. But I feel like they're going to go more lighthearted with it. And I think that's a mistake. I really yeah, agree. I don't know. I can see it being Ga- like a Ganondorf tween. doesn't work in a lighthearted environment, and he's gonna be in the the show, so he doesn't. Yeah, look, he needs to be evil as shit. Like, he can't be like look, Bowser. Probably can get away with being like, Haha, like I love Peach, 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 Peach. Yeah, you can't do that with fucking Ganondorf. Ganondorf doesn't fuck around. Ganondorf yeah. would. Ganondorf does a lot of fucking nasty things, man. I, I do think that the fact that they're going to live action and not animated gives me gives me hope that they are not going to try and strike a funny tone with this. You know, if they want to do that, they would have just gone to animated and done Illumination and done another Minion Super Mario Brothers Despicable Me type movie. But I think the fact that they're going with live action means they're going to try and treat this more seriously. Probably not as serious as we want. But totally agree, Jason. I don't want them to take this lighthearted in any way. It's Nintendo. That's the only unfortunate part. That's like in their MO. Yeah. I think <clears throat> I would make <clears throat> an epic movie that's like a 10 out of 10. I mean, I'll be gracious, 9 out of 10. And like make it awesome. And at the very end, clearly added on, it like is it like Link wakes up. Like, not the Link who was... There was no Link in the movie. It's just Link wakes up. And Zelda's like, what's wrong? He's like, ah! And then the movie, like, ends. Are you saying it's like a... It's like a whole... Uh, what was that What was that show where... It, where New the, Heart? The end of the final episode. Yeah, the New Heart yeah. where he just wakes up. Except the movie before clearly has nothing to do with that. That's just the one time... Like, they don't even mention... They mention a completely different area in the whole movie. Like, it's like, I just... At the end of Lord of the Rings, I just edited Link waking up, but it's Elijah Wood. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't think this will be bad. I don't think it will be terrible. My concern is that it will be like like Sibylla saying in the chat. My concern is that it will be like the Mario Brothers movie. It will be mid. It will be okay. And Zelda deserves better than that. Uh, yeah. I like. I think Zelda never makes usually a bad game. I think their games are usually average or above, um, which is good for them. I don't think they make. Yeah. And their stories are always at least compelling. And no unless stinkers. they don't really, unless they don't have it. Oh, there are some stinkers, but yeah, you know, like oh, we're not going to talk about this. I, I like how I said they're only average or above, but there are like Zelda two. Fuck that game. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I, yeah. I have beef yeah. with that one. Fuck that game. But the CDI games, those are good. Yeah. 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 Uh, but their 3D games are very good. I think their 3D games don't mess up, and their universe, they build it out pretty well, even if it's confusing as fuck and you need a, a book for it. So I don't know where they're going to go off. It really depends. how The story, this is one of the few times I think their story really defines how good this like live action would be. Like It really depends if they're doing what universe they're doing, who's like villains they're doing, like what approach they're doing to it. Um, if it's going to be a tragic or the, the normal hero story, or are they actually going to try to fall, like I said... One yeah. of the game stories. It really depends. I'm excited for it. Uh, we'll see what ha- we'll see what happens. Also, in one of the translated tweets, they said they've been working on it for a few years. So I assume like yeah. they've gotten this at least script and pre production into a a good point. Like I don't think they've been casting or anything yet. No, um, no, no. And, and 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 it says the title of the press release is "Development of a Live Action Film of the Legend of Zelda to Start." So I think exactly to your point, they have the script. They have director, they have a screenwriter, and they're now they're actually going to start putting it together. 
Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, next up, <clears throat> Grand Theft Auto the Sixth has uh, formally, I guess, formally been announced, right? Yeah, because uh, they yeah. didn't announce yeah. it. They didn't announce it for the leak. They just said, "Hey, we're working on stuff, and it sucks that it's out there. We'll show it when it's ready." But they didn't acknowledge that it was GTA Six. Uh, this was uh, Rockstar getting out there and uh, tweeting. Uh, oh, why can't I? Oh, I have <laughs> I blocked Rockstar apparently. Uh, next month marks the 25th anniversary of Rockstar Games. Thanks to the incredible support from our players worldwide. Without you, none of this possible. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We're very excited to let you know that in early December, we will release the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto, which they did not call Grand Theft Auto 6. Uh, we look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with all of you. Oh, you know, that's a good point. It's it. I believe the leak said that it's called GTA VI, which if we've learned from Kojima does not mean six. So <laughs> it means Venom Island. <laughs> Um, anyways, just to, to, to bring you back to the leaks, the leaks. Wait, wait, um, wait, 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 wait. Before you make fun of me, it could be called Grand Theft Auto something. It doesn't have to be Oh, no, six. you're totally right. That was just, it was just <laughs> yeah. an easy oh, okay. Vice City 2. There. No, yeah. actually Vice City 3 instead of Vice City No, it's 2. called Grand Theft Auto VI City. Yep. <laughs> VI. Um, so anyways, the leaks, the leaks, which were basically confirmed by Rockstar coming out and saying, like, it sucks that this shit leaked. The leaks uh, are two protagonists, one male, one female. First time we've had a female main protagonist in a Grand Theft Auto game uh, takes place in Miami. And uh, basically like, yeah, it's like it's like basically southern Florida. So I believe it goes all the way slightly north of Orlando. So you're getting Orlando, Tampa, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, the Keys, um there were some you other stuff see, in it you could see Ian's Sorry, house okay. in it. you yeah. know honestly i'm a little upset because they don't go all the way to jacksonville they, oh. they stop yeah it looks like they're gonna stop about two hours south of me um bastards but uh but, well you know grand theft auto takes place in bad cities and jacksonville is too nice so uh mm. anyways it, I'm, I'm excited for it i do like rockstar games uh red dead redemption 2 even for the problems i had with it still a hell of a video game even even the flaws in it still a hell of a video game and i'm excited to see what they do next this is rumored to be the most expensive game ever made up to a two bill budget Damn. according to the rumors so yeah bonkers. i mean crazy i mean the first one look i have no beef with this series i think some people might our team i don't even know but like Mm -hmm. uh they deserve to spend a lot like this game like for all its flaws like people played this fucking game to like hell and back like yeah they're gonna spend a big budget on it because they know if they do they, they have a high player base already formulated so yeah and they still you know again for the flaws they make in their games there are still parts of their games that are polished and built out to an obscene extent you know like in gta 5 the flip-flops actually working and making sound you know the ability to shoot a trail of gasoline and it and it goes all the way up to whatever vehicle or whatever you poured the gasoline on it's it it's always a marvel of of game design when their games come out whether you actually like love them and think they're a 10 out of 10 or not so this, this yeah. is going to be a big milestone in gaming yeah i'm excited for it, it, it um, my gut and most people's guts it will not be at the uh, game awards i don't think yeah i don't think they would do that i also don't think jeff Keeley would do that um uh really? not not jeff in, Keighley. No, no, jeff no, 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 Keeley no. would would oh he would do all oh. sorts of disgusting things i don't want to talk about on stream just to get that trailer no i more of meant like he would do that but i mean i like i don't think it would just be like oh let me open with this and crush everything else um it might be an no, end. He would do that in a fucking heartbeat. Yeah, he would he do would that, do that in, a heartbeat. in a heartbeat. Yeah. But 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 to the point we talked about in the Discord for the last several years, Rockstar has just been like, fuck press conferences, fuck events. We may announce something around that event, but we have more than enough press on our own that all we have to do is tweet and then like a little bit later drop a trailer and we're fucking good to go. So that's probably what they'll do. You know, again, taking advantage of December news craziness in the game space, which happens because of the game awards and because of Goaty discussions, etc. So they're taking advantage of the, the space in the news cycle, but they'll probably just do it on their own. Yeah, I'm guessing it'll just be a minute trailer like they did for five and yeah. Red Dead just showing like 
random stuff in the world. Uh, and then yeah. fade to logo. And um, I'll say this, you know, a lot of signs are pointing towards this coming out next year. The biggest sign was a news story from a couple months ago about how Take-Two Interactive said, hey, our projections for next year are we're going to make a fuckload more money next year than we've ever made before, and we're not going to tell you why. And it was like, hmm, I think that points to GTA 6 coming out next year. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we're going to make so much money. Uh, absolutely wild. Uh, next up here on the good old news, uh, I have no idea what this is about. Something about AI and Xbox, uh, from Microsoft. Yes, uh, so this is from The Verge, and they are, uh, citing that Microsoft is partnering with InWorld AI to, quote, develop Xbox tools that will allow developers to create AI-powered character stories and quests. Uh, it will include an ai design copilot system that Xbox developers can use to create detailed scripts, dialogue trees, quest lines, and more, so leaning into the uh, large language model that ChatGPT, OpenAI, etc. have been based around to basically generate written, dynamic written content. Um, how do you guys feel about this story? It's a little bit of a hot-button topic. Well, you want to go first, or...? Yeah, I, I can, can go first. I was just going to... I mean, my stance on AI is it's a tool, and as long as you're not... <clears throat> like what the fuck what an ai you're a tool man you're a fucking tool <laughs> let, let him know let him fucking know <laughs> i was like wasn't sure where that bit was going um so like in the end like if you are making your life easier by get like getting stuff done uh like say someone's tasking you with writing a bunch of random lines of dialogue for like random characters to say go for it. I mean, you're still going to have to go through each one of those and edit them anyways. Like AI is not something you just type into and then the answer comes out and you submit your work. So as far as a tool based AI stuff, I think that's totally fine. If it's saving time for developers on all sorts of stuff, uh, it's kind of like the getting rid of people's jobs part of that, which I will argue is a fine line. You can't take what I think and broad stroke it against everything, but um, it's also not stroke something it. that's going to, yeah, we can stroke it all over the page. So, yeah, and no stealing. Stealing bad. Um, uh, yeah, my my thoughts are pretty similar. It's as long as there's a human element to like whatever you do, I think that's where you. I mean, look, I don't like humans, but for the most part, it would be nice to have a human element to most things because uh, it allows for d diversity instead of just all blending together. Because I think AI, once you start doing that, uh, it all starts merging together. Ideas don't get fluctuated and tested against each other they all start come from the same origin source or something like that and i think you would run into risk of being very bland and boring which is arguably more problematic than actually being you know yeah uh anti-person i guess boring is yeah boring is also bad too <laughs> we don't talk yeah. about it but you don't want to run into that so yeah it's like i said as long as it's not abused and takes away what the individual can do i think it should be yeah. used in the correct way and nothing beyond that, hopefully. So I saw one, there was a, there, a, a league, uh, not to bring it back to that new, new, but Fuck. there was a, there was a, there was a commentator who stated, like, I think they, they finally found a way so somebody can like announce and, uh, commentate over a game that was an AI source instead of actually having the commentator do it. And it was all done yeah. AI. And the guy was like, I don't like this at all. Cause it's starting to, feel like it's taking away his job or like what's the point now like if you're taking away that and you have somebody commentate over it i don't know so it can yeah. bleed yeah, everywhere I mean, it's that's the kind so, of thing where it's yeah. the difference of like hey i'm running a little league thing and i just need an announcer and i'm not good at it let me put a shitty ai on it versus hey this is our giant league event let's hire someone who's actually good at yeah. like calling out stuff yeah uh for that i mean here's here's my take i th i think I think there's two things at play here. Not not just two things, but two things I want to talk about. One is, you know, like Sibylla says in the chat, stealing is bad. And with these large language models, it's all about the the ethics of how are you training the model. The problem that people have with ChatGPT and with Midjourney and all this other stuff is that they are using other people's copyrighted or protected or private work to train the model. And then the model is then spitting parts and pieces and amalgamations of that work back out. 
and that's stealing. I don't think that's appropriate. So I'm okay with these models. I'm okay with this AI generative technology as long as you are careful about the sourcing of the material. So, so for example, one of the things that Microsoft's been doing with their open AI tech and sourcing it out to enterprise and businesses like the company I work for is they say, hey, you know, we can provide this large language model similar to chat GPT and it comes as a skeleton and the skeleton has like basic interactions that we've built into it, like how to talk, how to interact with people, et cetera. And so we can we can know that that content is OK because we own the content that we fed into it. And then you can have a private version that you throw, you know, let's say let's say you have a help page for your company website that is like, here's our 10 pieces of software. Here's a, a documentation for all the code, all the features, all the help pages, all the IP addresses of our servers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All this just fucking information in a wiki somewhere. You feed that into this large language model. And then it will spit that back out at you. So now instead of having to look for something, you go to your company internet and you say, hey, bot, what's the IP for this server? And it's like, boom, here it is. And I found it from this web page. I think that's a good use of it. And the key thing about that is that the content from the feed into it to the output of it and the usage of that content is completely OK, legally and ethically. You know who owned it. You know you have the rights to use it. And you know what comes out of it is going to be used in specific use cases. And you're not going to spit it out in the public. You know, you're going to be careful about how you're selling it for a lot of purposes. It's internal only. Totally fine with that. And I think that's that's the part of it is that that's the big problem with AI right now is that there's no regulation on the content input and the content output. So it's literally just going around the Internet, stealing content, mashing it together and then offering it to people to use in their own shit, which is, you know, copyright infringement, privacy concerns, et cetera. Um, so I got to take a breath here. Ooh. The other part you mentioned, Will, you said something about uh, people losing their jobs. Was that right? Yeah. Um, how do I put this? There, I wish I had the statistic in front of me. There used to be millions of fucking typists in the world. People who knew how to type on a typewriter and all they did every fucking day was data entry and write memos and copy memos and send them around offices and around the world, etc. They don't have jobs anymore. You know why they don't have jobs anymore? Because the technology got fucking better. And so part of this AI element is, again distinguishing it from the content part if the content's okay and you have a tool that is making it easier for a company or a person to do something and that means that hey we need less individuals to do specific things that the ai can now do for them better i'm okay with people losing their jobs over it and and, and again as long as it's done ethically and correctly if you're in a profession and your profession is being consumed by technology because technology can do it better. I hate to be a hard ass, but it's like, hey, buddy, maybe you need to find a new profession. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, it sucks. But you're if you're a book binder, that's if you're a book binder, if you are a typesetter, if you work at a fucking newspaper factory, buddy, you got to see the fucking writing on the wall. And it's not <laughs> the, the answer is not fuck the newspaper. The answer is not fuck screens. It's your industry's dying. That's just how things go in the market sometimes. And it's not malicious necessarily. It's just your your particular skill set is not as in high demand anymore. Yeah. And that's how it goes. So so again, the biggest hurdle is ethical moral concerns. Totally agree with that. If we get over that hurdle and we use the AI intelligently, and like you said, Jason, there's always got to be a human check there. I don't want to consume raw AI content. But if you use the AI to make it easier and quicker for you to iterate and create that content. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah, my job losing thing was more on the creative content side of that. Like, oh, hey, yeah. I'm I'm doing XYZ. Let me just generate it, the whole thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I, I will say, though, I'm not at a hot takes because my final hot take is in that example, the reason why you can't really do that right now why why i can't go to an ai and say make this image for me and it spits it out and i can immediately use it 
again, ignoring the content concerns. The reason why I can't do that is because the AI is not good enough right now. But it will reach a point where it will be oh good boy. enough. Probably. And that's okay. We need, to, we need to come to understand that it's okay. It's okay that we probably won't need as many graphic designers in the future. Because a lot of the lower, like quicker graphic design, lower demand graphic design requests can be handled by technology now. Oh, yeah. And we need to be okay with that. It's just how it's going to be. Yeah, in the same way, like any of those things have have gotten like oh uh, or like to some extent Grammarly, like oh quickly like yeah. do this or quickly or quickly sketch your story yeah. uh, boards like you were proofreaders. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The menial tasks of so creativity. Th yeah, and that's that's what makes me a little upset because it's like like I was listening to the Giant Bombcast today. I'll fucking call them out. It's a bunch of people in the journalism industry, and they're super fucking pissed at how content has turned out nowadays and how people are leaning into AI for generative stuff. And their stance is basically get rid of all that shit. It's fucking awful. Go back to humans touching everything. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go back to fucking typewriters. We're like, fax, you can't. Fax that's... machines. We have one at work. Yeah. Too. We're not going to be <laughs> physically, like, culturally possible of moving backwards like that once we have this tech. And even if we did, I would not make that fucking choice. Like, this is just how things roll forward. That's Random aside, but I remember having a discussion that the how far we've progressed, we're all 90s or earlier babies, at least. If you think about the progression from 80s, 90s, 70s or whatever with computers and all that jazz yeah. from here to with cell phones and communication also like going that far plus Internet. I don't actually think that. If you do that 30 or 40 year period, the jump we made, I don't think the next 40 years are going to be as a revolution. It's going to stagnate a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Totally. So, agree yeah. I know it has something to do yeah. with this in terms of the uh, AI. I think that's going to be probably the most you'll push, but and I, I want to say gonna jump as much. So Sibylla, like the, if people are getting correctly paid or like living wage, all that sort of stuff, I think that's a separate conversation. Like, Absolutely. Obviously. Yeah. All of this, like a business firing their entire staff to replace them with AI and also wasn't paying them like it was a whole different ball game of there's a lot of aspects to this thing just yeah. beyond just the initial thought of it coming out for yeah sure. yeah yeah we shouldn't be paying them anything is what i'm saying so maybe cheeseburgers yeah we should well if we pay them in company money then they spend oh, that money Bitcoin. at the company store company Bitcoin. we can just <laughs> supply say. everything they need and if they live yeah. in our apartments I can't wait to get a blizzard hat and uh, a blizzard nail and, you know, hammer. I don't fucking know. My man. Xbox condoms. Yeah. They never break. <laughs> Just red rings of death. So, yeah, sometimes you get a red <laughs> ring. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, we both had the same thought. Uh, that's gross. <laughs> Phil Spencer. Oh, wow. um, that's AI from uh, Microsoft. They're going to kill us all. Uh, finally here, uh, we have the OLED Steam Deck was announced today. Um, it was actually briefly leaked by a website I work for. Uh, and then it was announced. Uh, and, uh, that is the OLED Steam Deck. It is a brand new screen. No, uh, no, like, performance upgrade in the sense that it runs things better than the other one, uh, visually. Uh, or performance wise but it does have faster downloads l bigger 30 to 50 percent more battery life it is a little bit lighter five percent lighter i think it has an upgraded carrying case uh and a larger screen so uh hey. yeah larger four. screen also i think the screen goes up to 90 hertz now i believe the old yep. screen didn't um I've, a lot of people got hands on with this and they're saying this feel to paraphrase this feels like a pro version of the current steam deck like if you just look at it and you're like oh it's just an oled screen it's just like the switch oled and it's like no it's more than that it's not just oled it's not just a bigger screen it's literally people are testing it 50 percent more battery so playing cyberpunk 2077 an hour and a half on the original steam deck it's now two and a half hours like it's it's a significant upgrade which is pretty cool. This is like a mid-gen refresh come early. And this is, I believe, I don't know if this is how, this is what Tam said Valve described it as. It is the, it is the best version of the Steam Deck 1. That is what this, this is. It is 
It is yeah. what they set out to make when they made the Steam Deck. It is the yes. best. Po- so anything that comes out after this w- won't be the Steam Deck one. They just want. Yeah, they to- also said they said the next Steam Deck is probably two to three years away. Yeah, I'd believe so. it. If, there was if, part of I, me I, that was like, "What if I got a Steam Deck OLED?" Hand handhelds seem to go always, at least in the past. Usually, it would be like three to four years apart. Um, yeah, maybe five. So. I'm excited though, because I I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but th- that um, gaming PC handheld market is pretty crowded now, um, and basically every other I don't want to say every other one, but there's two or three others on the market now that are the same price as the Steam, ba- Steam Deck or maybe $100, $200 more and like twice as fast. Like, like they are performing a lot better. The number one problem they have, though, is they're all running on Windows and Windows is dog shit in like handheld mobile mode. It just does not work as a portable OS. Um, so I'm really excited for the Steam Deck when they bring all that hardware enhancements back into the Steam Deck and Steam OS and all the enhancements there and the larger player base and support and community with the Steam Deck 2. So I, I was thinking about picking up the OLED as well, but I'm like, How much is I, OLED? I'm just going to wait. I think it starts at 550. It's like same price, yeah, 550 right? is God. 512. I have to use and that then, a lot to make it yeah. worth that much money. That's, I, I mean, mean, that's the thing is I don't think I, I feel like if you travel much. a lot more, it's better. Like I don't, or there's yeah. public transit, or if you use like public transit or something like but that. But also, Jason, if it. you didn't have a computer, like that's a that's crazy true. good deal to get a yeah one of those for five five fifty but i i feel like i should spend be spending that 550 on upgrading my graphics card for computer but i'm saying if you didn't have anything if you had nothing yeah and you wanted a computer i would buy the steam deck a monitor a physical keyboard and mouse and you'd be pretty well well i can't play a league on my steam deck will come on now i mean you could if you wanted to i think you i think you can i think you'd be i play world of warcraft on my steam deck (laughs) yeah but i'm competitive so i'm a big time player but that's but that's no but that's the thing about the steam deck is it's USB C, so you can USB C out to a hub Mm. and have a monitor a mouse and keyboard and it's a fucking desktop at that point i can't i can't play hots on my steam deck (laughs) oh my god Uh, yeah (laughs) so it's for this next story I'm super excited. I was not. I'm going to be honest with you. I was not optimistic about the Steam Deck because if you guys remember the Steam Box and Steam OS that they tried before and that shit just did not work, did not take off. But I'm glad this has taken off and has huge support because it's proven not just that it's possible, but it's also set up a very good ecosystem with Steam OS and Steam Deck that um, I think we're going to see. I I, I think we're going to see. Yeah, like a renaissance of handheld gaming PCs, and I think it's going to become a normal part of the market for at least the next 20, 25 years. Yeah. It's just going to be around. We're going to see iterations of it, et cetera. And that's, that's cool to know. That's cool. I can see it. Uh, finally here, uh, Nintendo sales data. We want to go through this quick. You got highlights for it. We can rush through it. them. Rush through them, yeah, dude. Yeah, we can rush it. Um, Rush it. So the first thing is uh, Steam has announced a brand new OLED Steam. Oh, sorry, wrong tab. Uh, here we go. Nintendo Switch sales have recently reached 132.46 million units. Uh, let's play a little game real quick. They are behind one other piece of Nintendo hardware. The, Can you guys guess what it is? The Wii. Nintendo Wii. No, Wii was 101. So they're 31 million above the Wii. There's another piece of Nintendo hardware that has more sales than the Switch. More sales. Uh, the DS. Uh, it, it's it's not these top ones because I haven't scrolled down it's yet. The DS. It, it is the DS. Oh, it's the DS. the DS. The DS had 154 million. That's units. my. I think it's in my top three systems of for we we did a Nintendo tier list. Yeah. So it's I think back. I think the Switch is going to beat it at some point. It's only Probably. 20 mil behind because yeah, it's a mix it's of both. Selling. Um. Yeah. And despite its early problems and all of that jazz, and it's a, it's a good system. I'm not like, yeah. I think we did a re- tier list rating of tw- in 2017, 2018. I'm not going to call out any names. I think it might have been 20- before the games all came out. This is the first year. Somebody put it as their favorite system, like or up there as their best system of all time, to- or all of all in Nintendo system. Uh-huh. Like, you're fucking crazy. It only had Mario Odyssey and. Uh, no, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Of the Wild. Yeah. And that, those came out like five months or six months anyway 
So maybe Breath yeah. of the Wild was a launch title. Mario Odyssey is not. So it was like December. Yeah. Yeah, they so, were wild and out on that that take. Uh, so the the other crazy thing about the Nintendo Switch is the attach rate, um, which is basically how many pieces of software per console sold on average. And right now it's it's about to hit ten pieces of software per per hardware unit. So they've sold one point one billion pieces of software for the Nintendo Switch, which is crazy. Um, gentlemen, <clears throat> can you guess which of these consoles? Is currently set up on my 4K TV. Nintendo 64. No. GameCube. No. Hey you. Is it the Game Boy? No. That's a good guess. Advance? No. Is it your Switch? <laughs> no, it is not my Switch. The Wii is U. It, the best is system the of all Wii time. U. <laughs> God damn it, Will. <laughs> Karen's been playing Super, Mar- great, Super Paper Mario. And it's I put it on, on the Wii U? Is well, it on the Wii? Uh, it's on the Wii, but I put it on the Steam Deck, but you need the Wiimote to play that game. But, so I put it uh, on the Wii U. Uh, well, so the, way, that game, the that Wii U fantastic. emulates Thumbs Wii. up. I love that game. So. Tell her she's got good taste. She's played it before, but she she said it was just out of memory, so she's been it's a good playing game. it. She loves Paper Mario. The best non Paper Mario Paper Mario game. Yeah, it has like the weird. She was showing. It's not stuff. really a Paper Mario game, but it is. Yeah, I get it's, bored. It's, I just say shut up. Yeah. And, no I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to watch. Uh, yeah. Pretty, I gotta play a Paper Mario. I still haven't. Thousand I was Year gonna Door, play baby. Thousand Year Door, but now I'm waiting for the remaster. The release of it, yeah. I'm super excited for that. So they're uh, I, I did watch her play Origami King, and that was pretty cool. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. And then now I want to play Thousand Year Door. Uh, those are Nintendo sales. The future of Nintendo uh, is more sales. We, we, should, we should hit that, though, which is there was a slide as part of Nintendo's presentation, and it says, I'll read this in quote. Future Outlook. Nintendo Switch will enter its eighth year. New titles will continue to be released. Maintain and expand user engagement with Nintendo Switch, maintaining business momentum. And at the bottom are three bullet points. Nintendo Switch will be entering its eighth year in March 2024. We will continue to release new titles and content for Nintendo Switch without being bound by the traditional concept of the platform life cycle. Going forward, we would like to continue to see many consumers play Nintendo Switch and to maintain our business momentum. Gentlemen, what does that sound like to you? That sounds like uh, Switch is the new DS. To me, it sounds like there will not be a Switch, Switch 2. 2. It will be a Switch Pro. And they're not going to do anything to stop, limit, or cut off the existing Switch, even in a couple years, that they're just adding an additional model to the ecosystem going forward. And I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. I don't think there's. I'm just going to fly out, and say it. I don't think there's a way to you can upgrade the switch, but I don't think there's anything. Like upgrading the switch is probably the best way. I don't think there's anything else you can do that wouldn't be beneficial to like their player base now because they want mo- they want like mobility in their game and they also want the ability yeah. to still be a console like it's perfect for what they want to do. It matches both their best worlds, the switch or the idea of the yeah. switch. So I don't think they ever would want to go out of that realm. I think they found the right niche for them. It's just yeah. fine tuning it instead exactly. of like, you know, we or we use and stuff. So, uh, yeah. And, and Go ahead. Will. Well, I was just going to say, <laughs> uh, fuck off. I hate you. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you have nothing to say, but you just want to let the other. No, person I did. Go I, ahead. I did have something to yeah, say. Yeah, Well, I don't care. Go I'm going ahead. Uh, I think switch is the new, like they're going to just release new models of the switch. Uh, not every like and at that point since now not every switch can play the same games they'll get to the point where it's like oh this is the switch pro uh it'll run better on this game or this is the switch 3ds switch switch light the like, new the new the switch new 3ds, 3DS switch, XL. switch 3ds oled xl hdr um so yeah. i think they'll eventually start doing that and then at some point they'll break to the switch 2 or something like that but who knows yeah I, I mean, I, I think that would be smart of them to do, you know, to, to, to release a sister console that performs better and then at some point in the future cut off the Switch. Well, I don't think they're going to do that, though. I think they I need think, to, though. I, I, I don't, honestly, I don't think they need to, because think about Tears of the Kingdom, right? So Tears of the Kingdom 
runs okay on the Switch. You know, it's got a little bit of frame issues. Resolution's not great. People still love the shit out of that game. And in handheld mode, it's fine. It's really when you throw it on the TV that it's ugly. That I don't want to say it's ugliness, but it's performance issues. Uh, that its limitations of the system become apparent. Um, but just imagine you, they continue to release games like that that are maxing out the system a little bit, but they play perfectly fine on the existing Switch. But there's also a Switch Pro, and it's like, hey, if you want to output 4K via DLSS and guaranteed 60 FPS, you're playing the same fucking games on both of them, but there is a performance increase. I don't think they ever have to draw the line because well, as long as as long as they don't make a huge jump in terms of the games, they don't try and jump into the next generation of games. They can continue to, to soak into that Nintendo indie market they've got well, right now. As, so as long as they're not ignoring third party, because that's a different yeah. thing entirely, because yeah. that, that is a huge issue of like them being able to master and adapt those games over. For their own Nintendo titles, they are starting to hit caps on what they can do, though. And I don't know if they'll get away with just, I don't say bullshitting without having to switch to or something like that, at least updating their their thing. Because you see it with Breath of the Wild, like you said, when you throw it on the TV. You see it with yeah. Pokemon and all the issues that it had. That game might have just been rushed, but it's pushing its boundaries. I don't think, you know, it's it's yeah. doing great. You see it with Fire Emblem Three Houses. It looks like dog shit. Uh and they can't master it, but even though engaged and proved on it, like they're starting to hit their threshold, I will say, and be backed up against the wall. It's just since people are for Nintendo, they're not as focused on graphics and system yeah. comp like com competency, then people don't care as much. But they are starting to hit those boundaries. They will need yeah. the update eventually. Uh, also, it is Nintendo. They could just release a s another console simultaneously. <laughs> Like, yeah, they could. I mean, they could go I mean, genuinely, I, I, I think they're going to do the new 3DS again. They're going to release a console, and they're going to be like, it plays the same games that both plays on both of them. And then a year from now, they're going to be like, this is a Switch Pro only game. This is a Switch Pro only game. So they're basically going to do the generational difference. But this slide and their sometimes their bad business acumen means they don't have the balls to actually do a generational switch, and they're just going to. To, to kill off the current switch by doing an increasing number of new switch exclusives. I bet that's what's going to happen. They've done it before. Yeah. They'll probably do the same thing again. I mean, they didn't fully do it with the 3DS, but I think, you know, it's like, hey, year one, there's no switch pro games. Year two, there's one or two. Year three, half of them are switch pro games. Year four, all new games are switch pro only. And they and just, they just they'll gradually the roll into it. With like, yeah. uh, like, GameCube collections and stuff because then the diehard yeah. Switch Pro fans, Switch whatever, will buy it. Yeah. Exactly. I it's I mean that's kind of the that's like the iOS iPad model, right? Which is you do you do have new releases each year, but it's it's not a it's not a generational jump, but they're always looking back three or four iOS versions and they keep cutting it off and saying software here doesn't run anymore, update the software. Software here doesn't run anymore, update the software. That's probably what they're going to do. Man, it's wild to me to think that game, at least Nintendo and Sony had a console and a handheld at the same time. And we're promoting both of yeah. those and developing for both of those. And Sega. Yeah, can't that's forget, true. Can't forget Sega, Will. Oh, sorry. I forgot about Sega. Oops. They have huge, they have huge shoes and a giant penis. So Sega Jesus. runs train, dude. <laughs> do you have Sega's number? Wow. No, I don't. For the shoes, I mean. He's got Sonic's oh, number. Oh, for the shoes, yeah. <laughs> Everyone has Sonic's number. He's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that's it for uh, for fucking uh, Nintendo sales data. I was sorry. I was lost in the sales data. They have so much sales information. They have, like, the top games for Wii U, Nintendo, Wii, uh, 3DS, uh, DS... It's mesmerizing looking through all of this. Yeah, I, I love that they share all this stuff and in pretty infographics too. I know. It must be fun to be like the web designer for this or like the data entry person. I bet they have a historian. I bet they're super smart too. Uh, the next section here is the wish list spotlight. That is where we spotlight our wish lists. Uh, Ian Gibson, I believe you put this on here. 
Yes, that's correct. I put Star Trucker on here. I don't think we've talked about it. This is basically Euro Truck Simulator, but in space. So you're you're space trucking in your space semi between space stations and you're hauling cargo. And it's like it's like literally like a a tractor trailer spaceship. And so occasionally you have to get out and like repair the engines and stuff. And and the game looks gorgeous. Like you're you're going down these space lanes and there's highway signs floating in space, <laughs> but they look like, you know, like an I-95 highway sign. Uh, this game just has like a lot of charm. It's a great idea. And it looks like they've actually added like a lot of really cool mechanics in here. So I'm super excited to play it. Um, I don't it has a release date of 2024. But folks, you can wish list this right now on Steam. Do it, girl do it i will say i i don't think this game is in vr i kind of wish it was vr because it shows you sitting in your cockpit and reaching around and grabbing a bunch of levers and stuff and that would be fun that would be fun to reach in your cockpit and grab a bunch of levers i'm gonna eject that's disgusting jason what the I forgot to talk about VTOL VR. <laughs> oh no, that sucks, folks. That's disgusting. What a wonderful show we've had here today. Uh, oh my god. I want to thank uh, Jason so much for being here. You're beautiful, and we yeah. love you. And when I drink chocolate well, milk, I think of you, man. and I get erect. Folks, we'll be back this weekend uh, with something. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's Veterans Day. I'm going to be going back and playing Call of Duty 1, which is one of the best, like, war video games ever made. It's fantastic. Yeah. War, man. Don't watch it if you've been in war, because you'll have PTSD. Uh, and then we are going to be back on Tuesday with more local chat, because I won't be here Thursday. I believe special guest Tom, my coworker from GameSpot, will be there. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll be... Tom wow. Hanks, oh. the Tom Hanks, will be there. It's going to be incredible. Uh, he's going to show us all of his fun stuff. So be there or be square, and we'll see you there. Bye.